Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 14 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera, faculty at Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University and today we shall be discussing on styles of decision making. In the previous session we discussed about the decision making process, structure, nature and type of decisions like structured and ill structured problems and programmed and non-programmed decisions. Taking that forward, now let us try to understand how managers behave in organization while taking the decisions. Whether it is their autocratic approach, whether it is a participative approach, they rely more on their self-information or they depend on others for taking decisions or is it they try to avoid decisions and delay them. So there are multiple facet facets with which the managers have their own specific style while managing. So in this session, let us proceed and try to understand what are these styles pertaining to managerial decision making. So the very first style of decision making is the rational style of decision making. The fundamental aim of this style is to keep off emotional factors in decision making. In this style, the manager makes decision only after systematically and logically analyzing the problems and possible solutions. So that means here the logic is the major factor for decision making style. They strive to get one best outcome of the whole decision exercise. The basic requirement of rational decision making includes the condition of the problems can be that they are unambiguous. So unambiguous means the problem is well defined and clarity is there. Goals are well focused, clear as well as attainable. Alternatives and their future consequences are knowable. So that means we know the outcome of the decision thus it becomes easy for us to apply the logic. Preferences are not unstable. So thus more relative stable environment. Absence of time and resource constraint, you have ample resources and ample time with you to take the decision. And best return or payoff from chosen alternative is possible. So lastly we may say that this style emphasis emphasizes on managers to ensure that their decisions serve organizational interest in the best possible manner and not serve their selfish interests. So this was the first style of decision making. So the second style of decision making is avoidant style. In this style the managers make all possible efforts to delay the decision which is uh, different or has a negative connotation but the managers they adopt this style just to avoid any negative outcome of their decisions. So in this style managers begin the decision process to solve the problems only after adequate pressure is brought on them. Now normally this style is adopted by the managers in certain situations. So what are the situations which favor this style? They consider the problem to be less significant and waiting is better option for them. In this scenario the manager would try to avoid the decision making. Then further, they feel that the problem is just a symptom of much bigger issues and root of the problem lies somewhere else. So they try to avoid it because they are afraid of any kind of negative outcome which may come up tomorrow after they take the decision. They feel that not much is possible because they have little control over the situation. Thus they try to avoid it. Also they think that decisions may produce a lot of resentment or resistance and hurt the feelings of causing feelings of people causing disquiet amongst the people. 
So the adoption of avoidance style by manager can actually demoralize the subordinates which may lead to lower productivity and lower performance. The third style of decision making by the manager includes the dependent style. In this style, the manager is dependent on others for taking their effective decisions. Here, the manager extensively consult their maybe seniors or subordinates and get the advice and directions from their senior members before they make the decision. Managers normally take less responsibility for their decision, thus they go for dependent style of management. Now this is because such decisions are made mostly on the basis of opinions and advice of the others. Generally managers adopting this style they prefer to remain passive and allow themselves to be heavily influenced by expectations of the others. So usually the dependent style is viewed as one of the least effective decision making approaches as it indicates clearly the lack of problem solving confidence of the individual which is one of the deterrent in managerial qualification. A manager has to be courageous enough to take the decisions. The fourth style of decision making is intuitive style. Now intuitive style is also based, based on the heuristics. Intuition may be defined as effectively charged judgments that arise through rapid non-conscious and holistic associations. So this means intuitive style managers they choose to make decisions based on their own instincts and gut feeling and that is their judgment of scenario where they do not have proper information or lack of information is there. As such managers emotional self-awareness forms the basis of choosing an alternative to solve the problem. So this becomes the reason of choosing the alternative. Understandably managers focus less on systematic information gathering and logical analysis or problem solving and rather on their own instincts. They depend more on their past experiences for taking decisions and learnings which make up to their intuitions. But however managers accept responsibility for their decisions unlike in the previous style I mean even if they have very little knowledge about possible outcomes of such decisions they still take up the responsibility. Rowe and Mason have classified decision styles into four types and these are based on two types of orientations. One is value orientation, the other one is tolerance for ambiguity and these four styles are directive analytical, conceptual and behavioral style of decision making. Let us see how these, these styles differ from each other. On the basis of value orientation that is task or people, what is the orientation whether they are focusing on task more or whether they are focusing on people affecting more or level of tolerance is for ambiguity is whether high or low. So if level of tolerance for ambiguity is high, so that means uncertainty is high and wherever level of tolerance of ambiguity is low, so that means certainty is high in terms of information and then managers characteristics corresponding to the style that he has chosen. Let us start first with the directive style. Directive style is governed by value orientation that is focuses on task than people and all technical aspects are considered. Level of tolerance of ambiguity is low so that means here the manager relies more on the certainty aspect and he is relying on logical, practical and systematic decision making. The second style is analytical style. Analytical style focuses on task rather than people and the technical aspects. Here the level of tolerance for ambiguity is high contradictorily to the directive style and this high ambiguity means that high uncertainty is there and thus the characteristics of the manager include cautious, painstaking and open minded. 
under these characteristics only he can correspond to high ambiguity level. The third category is conceptual style of decision making. Under this the focus is on people and social aspects. Unlike task now the shift is on people and rather than technical aspect it is more of social aspect. Level of tolerance of MBBT here also is high. Thus the manager has characteristics like creativity, daring and relying on intuition that can help him, help him have judgment about how to proceed further. The last style as given by Rowe and Mason is behavioral style. This behavioral style has a focus on people and social aspect but the tolerance for ambiguity is low here. The manager's characteristic is procrastinator, dependent and supportive. Here he tries to delay as much as possible all the required decision makings during the course of time. After that we need to now discuss the decisions that are commonly made in the organization. So here we have three types of decisions which are commonly made in the organization. They include strategic decisions, tactical decisions and operative decisions. The example for strategic decisions include should we have merger with another company, should we pursue a new produce, product line or should we downsize of our organization. These are the decisions to be taken which are generally taken by the top management, CEOs and board of directors. They may adopt different styles of decision making. The second decision that is to be taken is tactical decision which are generally the decisions which pertain to the strategic decision and in order to fulfill the strategic decision tactical decisions come into picture. So what should we do to help facilitate employees from the two companies working together? Also in the case of merger how should we gel the employees together? How should we market the new product line? Here we had talked about we want to open up a new product line or start a new product line. But in this case we are talking about marketing the new product line. Who should be let go when we downsize? So here the decision is we go for downsizing but when we think of employee reduction in the organization who all should be the ones who should be reduced from the place. And who takes generally this? This is the decision taken by the manager. Under operational decisions, the decisions which facilitate the tactical decisions that how we can achieve tactical decisions is how often should I communicate with my new co-worker. Here also we try to communicate, develop a communication between the individuals but in operational decisions we make a plan or we make a policy or we make a program so that we are able to develop or maybe a practice so that we are able to communicate or able to develop a con connect between these new co-workers. What should I say to customers about our new product and then how will I balance my new work demands. All these are done or taken by employees throughout the organization. So students by now I think you are very well aware of different styles of decision making and different type, types of decisions which are taken in the organization. Now factors influencing decision making process. Here I think by now you are quite well versed with principles of management course and the contents to it and if I may ask you take two seconds to answer this question quickly what can be the factors which affect the decision making process. So there are two factors which affect the decision making process. They can be the internal factors to the organization and can be the external factors to the organization. Why so? By now we understand that internal policies and practices of the organization which lead tomorrow becomes the strengths and weaknesses of organization, they prompt the organization to take up certain different decisions so as to cope up with the building competition outside and the external factors which pose opportunities and threats, they govern or they push the organization to take up certain other decisions which tomorrow can make organization have a better competitive advantage. So two types of factors which influence include internal and external. Let us study these two factors in detail. 
So, ex external factors have further sub factors which affect the organizational functioning. So, the first one is nature of environment. Environmental factors refer to social factors, cultural factors, political, legal, economic, technological etc. in which the organization operates. These factors remain outside the organization and yet they influence the decision making process. Now this is a beautiful thing that they are outside not inside the organization still they have high amount of influence on decision making process of the manager. Any change in these environments that we have mentioned above may produce opportunities or threats for the organization and thereby a problem situation. What can be an opportunity and what can be a threat for an organization? An opportunity can be changing demand by the, need, by the customer and with, with changing life priorities and lifestyle of the customer he may demand for some different products which probably other competitors are not giving. Hence, you can take up the opportunity as a manager and pitch into that. There can be a threat that your competitor has employed a new machinery or technology which has an edge over your competence and thus he may add on to his sales and profits. So, managers must constantly watch these environments to detect the problems early and solve them quickly. The second external factor is availability of time. Time we all understand is a crucial factor in making and implementing the decisions. It is necessary for managers to consider the time available and time required for making the decisions so that they can have a balance in getting the decision reached. When time is not a constraint that you have ample time, there is no hurry, managers can allow sufficient time for every stage of decision process. Otherwise, what they will do, they may go for the trap of satisficing that we have discussed in the previous session. Because of lack of time, they may go for a good enough choice. If the decision cannot wait any delay, they should rush through whole decision process. So, this is what generally then errors occur. So, clearly time constraints can affect managers ability to gather information required for developing the alternative for effective decision making. So, availability of time then becomes a critical factor in external environment which affects the decision making process. The third factor which affects is sufficiency or resources. The resource available can also affect managerial decision making. How? The level of difficulty in obtaining both human resources and the physical resources can determine the success of decision making process especially during the implementation phase. Once the decision is made, it is necessary for managers to mobilize the necessary resources to achieve the desired decision outcome. So, sufficiency of resources or insufficiency of resources will hamper or affect the decision making process. So, those were about the external factors. Now, we move on to discuss the internal factors which affect the decision making process. These include first physical and emotional state of the manager. So, usually the mood of decision makers can also have an impact on their choices. The clarity level of decision maker is usually characterized by a balance of physical, mental and emotional system. These are very, very sensitive and critical factors when it comes to decision making because unless otherwise the manager is in right state of mind, he cannot take up appropriate or accurate decisions. So, the ultimate selection of a decision alternative may be influenced by psychological factors such as feelings of regret, disappointments or maybe some kind of excitement that is joy or elation. The second internal or personal factor includes personal value system, philosophy and attitude. Value system of manager are shaped by the culture in which they practice the experience. Now what is culture? Culture includes norms, belief, philosophy and attitude of overall organization or you can say propagated by the top management. So these values in turn 
guide their attitude and philosophy and in turn shape their behavior. Shaping of behavior takes place because of this culture. So as such managers attitude towards risk, tolerance and ambiguity, their own value system, ethical practices can profoundly influence the decision making process. As we have heard it that there are evils like nepotism, favoritism, they are nothing but the ethical practices and probably they are the value system of the managers who follow such practices. On the other hand, there are certain managers who are very fair and just, so their value system is free from these evils and they follow righteous path. When organization values are strictly followed in all managerial decisions, such decisions are known as value-based decisions. And these value-based decisions are highly solicited for the growth of the organization. There is an example by a company, Biocon's values for decision making. Now here, this particular company has values often form the basis for individual behavior and they can shape members perception of fairness, just compassion, righteousness, duties and responsibility. We understand that values get reflected in the ways jobs are performed and decisions are arrived at by the organizational members. So thus each organization has a unique responsibility of fostering a value system that guides decisions of its members. So this is the duty of the organization to inculcate this feeling or behavior. However, the value system per se can be shaped only through persistent actions and guidance of higher management. So involvement of higher management is highly required in order to have fostering of a value system in organization. So each organization endeavors to develop its own core value system which in turn acts as a guide for the organizational decision making process. In this we try to understand Biocon's successful effort at value creation is worth mentioning here. So what this company is doing students, Biocon a leading pharma, biopharmaceutical company in India has established a few core values that guide the decision of managers across the organization and these core values are Organization members should remain open and honest in all their decisions. First, they must be entrepreneurial and innovative. So the creative platform is given to the managers in right way. Protection of and respect of intellectual capital which is also includes respects for intellectual capital of other organization. Enhancement of human talent including team efforts. Management's well-defined responsibility to the company, staff, customer, suppliers, community in general. So with the example of Biocon students, we can understand how the top management plays a major role in identifying the value system of the organization, disseminating the value system in organization and implementing the same and also making it sure that such value system is followed in principle and in all respect by all members where values like honesty, transparency, regard and respect to the competence and capability and roles and responsibility of all levels not only the middle and lower level is taken care of. And such kind of organizations are major role models for the organization in today's time. The next category is knowledge, skill and ability of the manager which is the internal factor that may affect the decision making. So the extent of presence of decision making and problem solving skills in managers can make a difference in their decision making ability. They differ in their knowledge, skill and ability area. Hence, when they have different knowledge that means the information that a manager carries is different than the other. So this information plus the skill along with the ability of manager to take decisions, to have courageous decisions, to be uh, risk taking or uh, maybe not so risk taking manager, all these differentiate the managers amongst themselves. 
managers mastery over other relevant skills such as interpersonal skills where they how they deal with other members so their interpersonal skills communication skills their goal setting skills can also influence their decision making effectiveness now let's move on to how we take decision so tools for decision making one of the tools can be the decision tree now what is a decision tree students in general terms decision tree is identifying different paths or alternatives while we are taking the decision we keep on seeking that what will happen next and we answer them in yes and no form and we reach we keep on doing this process until we reach to the end in the end when we have a conclusive answer or a decision to our problem so we have a diagrammatic representation of decision tree and let's try to understand with the help of that but before that let's have some theoretical inputs for that so a decision tree in simple terms is a graphical representation of different alternatives for a sequence of events of a multi stage decision problem now this multi stage decision problem can be simple or complex generally it is complex in nature so while evaluating the alternatives manager can adopt the decision tree technique for effective decision making decision tree is an ideal analytical tool to decision making especially when a decision is risky and costly in this scenario decision tree can be, be a valid choice for the manager to take the decision a decision tree can help managers choose between two or more alternatives it enables the managers to develop a visual image of their options and also illustrate the possible outcome of each option if adopted so it's something like if you want to open up a plant you think of whether shall i open a large plant or whether shall i open a small plant then you think of that after 2 years what will be the revenue of large plant whether this large plant will have profits or whether it may go for losses and the same goes for the small plant if it is in the profit part then what is what can be the two alternatives and similarly for the small plant so this is how we keep moving in graphic representation for each option and in the end we reach to the option or outcome which probably can be adopted so this method employs a graphic called decision tree so this is a decision tree with branches representing competing alternative strategies so these are competitive alternative strategies large and small profit and loss this schematic diagram helps manager to draw up complex sequence of decisions and strategy alternatives the decision tree normally consists of small circles called nodes and connecting branches so these nodes represent these are arrows that is the connecting branches these nodes represent decision points and the connecting branches stand for each possible alternative related to node to which it is connected so node and branch then further node and branch after graphing the decision points and possible alternatives managers should estimate the expected value of each decision based on probability once the benefits expected values and probability for each decision alternative are ascertained the managers can analyze the decision tree and choose the best possible alternative the decision tree depicted in figure below which we shall be discussing shows the problems and alternative strategies of an hr manager engaged in wage negotiation with the trade union that demands 50 per cent pay hike so that is the requisite this is what is being demanded to start with the hr manager has two competing alternative strategies of either accepting it or rejecting it the acceptance of demand means 3% additional expenditure for the firm and rejection of demand means it will lead to then further two possibilities the union may or may not resort to strike that can be one 
if the union does not resort to strike the firm will incur an additional recurring expenditure of 2 percent only in the eventuality of the union giving a strike so the other option there are two other possibilities the strike may or may not succeed if the strike succeeds the firm may suffer a production loss due to strike and besides this incurring 3 percent additional recurring expenditure. If the event of strike dissipates, the firm may suffer a production loss for strike period, but an additional recurring expenditure of just 2 percent. Such graphical depiction of strategies may help the manager to better understand the issues. So, here is the example that we just now discussed wage negotiation demand for pay hike 15 percent of basic offer by management is 10 percent of basic here compromise or confrontation so, first thing is that compromise is we accept that 3 percent additional reoccurring expenditure if we go ahead with the demand that the workers are asking for confrontation then they may have either employee resorting to strike if we do not allow them for any kind of wage negotiation or wage hike employees may not respond to strike this will have some amount of financial burden further if they are not resorting to strike this is the additional expenditure if they resort to strike then two options the strike either succeeds or strike fails so this is the probability of things. So, it may lead to loss due to production stoppage and 3 percent additional recurring expenditure and this may lead to loss due to production stoppage and 2 percent additional recurring expenditure. So, this is how a decision tree is formed and a manager reaches to different alternative until he finds the right solution. So, students group decision making is another aspect which decides on complex problems. Managers generally take feedback and discussion or have brainstorming session with other fellow team members or organizational members to solve any kind of unique problems or non-routine problems that occur. In this, the benefits are that people with different varied point of views or perceptions, they share with each other, they discuss the pros and cons and limitations and benefits of each alternative and they come to a conclusion with consensus which has multifold benefits that it is since it has been reached through consensus, it is acceptable by all members and since it is an outcome of a good brainstorming of multiple individuals, thus it may have high relevance to resolve the problem that management is facing. So, let us see what are the contents of group decision making. So, group is a collection of two or more individuals who are connected by social relations and common objectives. Group decision making may be defined as the process of arriving at judgment based on feedback of multiple individuals. Managers often prefer group decisions to individual decisions. What can be the reason? Because an individual decision, the creativity is limited. Only one person is deciding on based on his own limited knowledge. While in group decision making, sin, since multiple people are involved, that high amount of brainstorming takes place. So, generally this group decision making is done for non-routine and weighty problems. For instance, group decision is normally apt for problems that are complex, noble or important for the organization. This is because groups are generally better at selecting evaluation and estimating of alternatives and in problem solving. What happens when manager consults others, they can also gain different perspectives of same problem. So, these perspectives can turn facilitate the development of many alternatives and also the selection of the best choice. So, similarly, group decision making is more effective in detecting judgmental errors and faulty interferences about the problems and also in generating more correct solutions because why so because multiple thoughts are working together 
in most group decision makings two interrelated elements strongly determine the efficacy of the process they are social elements and technical elements it social element deals with the interpersonal dimensions of the group the effectiveness of social element in a group is known through the group cohesiveness and conflict management so the social element focuses on the bond between the individuals and what is this bond this bond is about group cohesiveness this group cohesiveness or interpersonal conflict management is the technique where people have a connect the as you know the molecules of any state of matter that is probably solid or liquid especially in solid they are tightly connected with each other so degree of cohesiveness is quite high there similarly this degree of cohesiveness needs to be very high the dimension between the individual needs to be quite high with respect to the social factor that contributes towards group decision making and the level of interpersonal conflict also governs and lets the manager understand how well the decision is going to be if the level of interpersonal conflict is quite low the decision is going to be highly effective otherwise it can be vice versa the technical elements in this group decision making is the element relates to functional aspects of the group the effectiveness of technical elements is decided by the kind of logic structure and model adopted by group in decision making process further managers can use any group decision making process that they find appropriate for decision situation but in general there are four major types of group decision processes available and let us see one after the other so we are discussing the group decision making process this can be first of consultative nature in consultative decision making the managers make the decision after discussing the problem problems and possible solutions with the group member as the term suggest it is more of participatory in nature where every member is consulted the second group decision making style or process can be democratic here the managers together with members discuss the problem and jointly make the decision usually the opinion of majority members becomes the decision of the group so in both cases it has a participatory approach in consultative it is more of seeking information from them and their opinion in democratic it is the involvement of the members the third group decision making style is consensus decision making style in the consensus decision making style the manager and the group members they jointly discuss like other two methods but and they reach to a probable solution as well finally a decision is reached only after all the members agree on a specific course of action so that is what we call as consensus has been reached in delegative decision making style the managers delegate the decision making to group and to the subgroup here the manager normally provide the guidelines for problem analysis and decision making and he is generally away from the people who are going to make the decision so here you can see he is a manager he has given the task to all members he is observing from outside he has given all the guidelines to people but he is not participating in the decision making this is what we call as delegative decision making style decision making is of utmost importance for effective management in the organization thus making the right decision must become a habit of the manager so to be successful they must continuously enhance their decision making skills and remain alert for environmental changes we can quickly see the differences between individual decision making and group decision making here in individual decision making certain benefits 
and certain cons are there similarly pros and cons of group decision making for individual decision making it consumes less time so typically faster than group decision making and best individual in a group usually outperforms the group accountability is easier to determine that who took that decision while the negative side of individual decision making can be limited ideas as it is dependent only on one person identifying the best individual can be a challenging task because we don't know who is the star performer in the organization possible to put off making decisions if left alone to do it so delayed can also take place in group decision making the pros include diversity of ideas and can piggyback on others ideas as well so it is an asset as we have multiple opinions greater commitment to the idea here because number of individuals are involved in this process interaction can be fun and serves as team building task which can act as a recreation facility for individual members while the negative side of group decision making is that it is highly time consuming group dynamics such as group think can occur and social loafing harder to identify the responsibility for decision is also there what is social loafing students which is a negative side of group decision making under social loafing what happens when individuals are working in a group there is a probability that out of all the group members one individual or two individuals they do not showcase their best of ability and they don't do that because they don't want to tell everyone what their competence level is or maybe they do not want to share the reward of their expertise with others so they believe or they behave in a manner they generally remain silent do not contribute their best of competence in the group effort and thus this scenario is called as social loafing but on the contrary these individuals are the ones who perform or outperform others when they are given the task individually so this is this is an evil of group decision making process or you can say a negative side of group decision making process the other side effect of group decision making is group think now while decision making is going on in the organization the organizational members may differ with each other or the group members may differ with each other say for example if there are 10 members in a decision making process six want that we want to go ahead with one kind of decision and the other four say that we do not want to go for a technological change or upgradation of technology which is the problem statement or the decision which is going to take here the group pressurizes the other members to conform to the thinking of the group in this case the other four members may not actually participate or they just let go the others so that they do not disturb the interpersonal relations with them that can be one reason or the other reason can be that thinking that the other group members or majority of group members have they are pushing the remaining members to adopt the same thinking style this is called as group think so in group think what happens the group pushes the non conforming members to conform with the group decision while the other evil which is group shift is also another uh, you can say outcome of group decision making process this is little different than group think in this case the members who are of different opinion than the group are persuaded they are not pushed rather they are persuaded by the other members to change their opinion it is something like for example if you wish to go for river rafting that is your choice and other group members do not want to go for it so what they do they persuade you that please do not go for river rafting 
it is a dangerous exercise it may cause harm to you or it may have some other negative effects or may they they may come up that safety measures are not appropriate at the place where you are thinking to go for river rafting so here what the other group members are doing they are shifting your thought process by persuading you from doing the thing similarly they may also have a vice versa thing that is they wish to go for group river rafting you are not interested now they will persuade you that what are the benefits of having this activity how adventurous this activity is and how courageous you would be told you will be known as after you do this exercise so in both the cases group has tried to shift or persuaded you from what you actually wanted to do here the scenario is in group shift you can either become from high risk taker to low risk taker or from low risk taker to a high risk taker so here the group members persuade the remaining members to go or opt for a decision which they wish to they means the group members now moving on to how decisions are supported so we have decision support system in the organization this decision support system has four sub systems and they work together to provide decision making support first is the language system which is supported supporting the decision making presentation knowledge system and problem processing system let us see what are different types of decision support system so based on the functions performed the decision support system can be classified into different models in total we are going to discuss five models of decision support system first is the communication driven decision support system the focus of this model is to facilitate faster communication and effective information this model is helpful for developing a series of decision options to establish a solution and for promoting consensus form of decision making the tools used for this type of decision support system model are through emails bulletin board systems electronic meeting systems including web conferencing the decision is supported and is made faster with accurate information the group based model can work both in office as well as web environment the second decision support system is the data driven decision support system the focus of this decision system is manipulation of collected and structured data for further problem analysis alternative generations and decision making it facilitates faster and efficient access to large data in this regard internal as well as external data are gathered and arranged in a sequential basis and this is also called as time series where previous past data or trends are collected to aid in decision making daily sales records annual budget information periodic inventory levels are few examples which are outcome of data driven decision support system here data plays the major role and data is the essence for taking a particular decision the third is document driven decision support system in this the emphasis of this model is on effective management and manipulation of unstructured information so that is a catch here it supports decision makers in converting unsorted documents into useful business data so since we are working on document documentation is done in an effective manner with the help of scattered data that tomorrow helps to take up the decision so these documents may be available in the form of text documents spreadsheets 
and other database records. A classic example of this model is the internet search engines which can sort huge volume of unstructured internet data and present them as useful information to the decision makers. And I am sure students you are utilizing this tool every now and then to enrich yourself in varied fields. The next decision support system is knowledge driven. The focus of this model is on making timely suggestions to the decision makers. Here the knowledge refers to business rules, regulations, procedures stored in the computers and used to make the decision. So knowledge about how the organization is functioning is what is discussed in this. Knowledge looks for a certain pattern in large volume of data, alerts decision makers when expected pattern is detected. So these patterns are then decoded to form a decision. The system gathering timely recommendations to stock market investors in the form of buy, sell, stop, loss are examples of knowledge driven data support system. The fifth model is model driven data support system. This model focuses on the development and manipulation of quantitative models where numbers are the focus to help decision makers in effective decision making. Decision makers can make use of statistical, financial and simulation models for decision making process. This model uses the data and parameters provided by a decision maker to generate alternatives, evaluate, interpret the alternatives and choose the suitable alternative. So students these were the decision support systems which enable a manager to take up right kind of decision. As you can see during these decision support system we have learnt that what all can become a tool or a helping hand to a manager. It can be the communication, the knowledge, the documents, data, models or numbers, patterns through which a manager gets equipped in taking the accurate decision. In today's session we have discussed about various decision making styles and tools like decision trees as well and different type of decisions which are taken in organization like statistical, tactical or operative decisions and what are the other value propositions of decision making process. So this there is a growing dependence of data uh, decision support system by managers due to its indispensable role in present decision environment. It helps the manager in several ways. For instance, decision support system helps the manager to handle complex situation with ease and this is possible as decision support system makes available necessary quantitative models, adequate data storage and faster communication of and easier access to large volume of data and consequently it can help managers in enhancing decision quality in limiting time and cost requirements of decision making. So these are basically the bottlenecks when we take the decision that manager gets this limiting time and cost requirements as a trouble but these data systems help the manager to take up the right kind of decision. Students this is the bibliography which I have referred to for this particular discussion today for the session on various styles of decision making. I request you all to kindly go through these in case you want to have a deeper knowledge on the content related to the topic discussed today. And here we come to the end of this session on various styles of decision making and I hope by now you have understood what are the differences between individual decision making, group decision making and various styles and data support systems for decision making. I conclude this session. Thank you all.
Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I'll be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And indeed the very charm of this particular story that I'm going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I'll be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty-handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet, and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman, and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.